Hi there, I'm Ben, and welcome to part 7 of my full platinum walkthrough for Dark Souls 3. Right, we're off to the catacombs of Carthus. We're continuing on. This this one, after the previous video, this video is a lot simpler now. Uh, yeah, so we're just going to go straight there. So to the um, Abyss Watchers. I couldn't remember. <laughs> of course I couldn't. Uh, yeah, we don't need to speak to anybody at this point, so we're just going straight on with it. So if you go to Fire and Keep, the Abyss Watchers bonfire... And we'll just carry on from there. Uh, yeah, there was lots of running around in the previous one, doing lots of stuff. There is a bit of storyline we need to do, uh, some some quest here we need, do need to do, and Reeves, we're going to be carrying that on for our ending. But apart from that, it's just pretty linear, uh, this area. I'll just show you down here. You see these stairs? Uh, they will come into play later on, those stairs. This is a shortcut if you die. Uh, I'll just show you. So you can drop down that side from the bonfire. So uh, go to the right and drop down all the way down to the bottom to the uh, the stairs. Obviously don't just jump off onto the stairs, you'll die. Right, so the main er enemy of this uh, area is skeletons and variations of skeletons. If they have glowing eyes, they will come back and you'll have to kill them twice. So the best thing to do whenever you kill a skeleton is look in the bottom right hand corner and see if you got some souls. If you didn't, you'll need to kill them again. Uh, they'll come back to life. Uh, that Carthus Rogue that I just got there, that applies bleed to your weapon, can come in extremely handy. Uh, these guys are a real pain, unless you boot them off the bridge like that. <laughs> uh, those guys we need to farm later on, there is a specific spot we'll be doing it for the Videlkin Shackles. Probably the worst um, Covenant item that you need to farm, It no it is the worst. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so skeletons, some of them don't have a head as well, by the way, so you won't be able to tell if you'll um, if their eyes are glowing, obviously. Uh, usually those ones don't come back to life. I don't think there is one that does, but just in case, just check the bottom corner. So I'm just going to jump off here. Uh, this is not 100% essential, obviously watch out for that drop. Uh, yeah, if you drop onto the pillar, it's going to reduce the damage you take, obviously. Watch out for the archer. Now you can, can, can come this way from the other way. Uh, there's not you don't have to drop down it's just kind of simpler to do it so yeah this guy's got a uh, glowing eyes and one HP apparently left <laughs> so just wait around and he'll come back and we'll get him with a charged R2 of course and then the, the Carthus pyromancy tome so we're gonna be giving that to our pyromancer back at base at firelink so yeah, you can. This is a, an illusionary wall. You can attack this from the other way as well. So I'll, uh, I'll link everything up so you know exactly where we are. Uh, so these guys are a pain as well. Extremely quick uh, if you let them be quick. Uh, it, you can stagger them quite easily if you double hand an L1 on them. You'll you'll probably win the fight. And of course, you can backstab them as well. So the opposite where we drop now, there's a sharp gem. We already have the sharp gem applied to our weapon. We'll come back there later on, so kind of keep in mind where that is. Uh, I'll, I'll show you later on so it's all linked together. Because this place, obviously, if you don't know this area, this is going to be a maze for you. It all looks extremely similar. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's just narrow tunnels. So I do want to link everything up so you know where we are. So this is the archer that was shooting at us before. You can see there's a button on the floor there. If you step on the buttons in this area, you're going to get shot with three arrows in uh, two rounds. Obviously, you can move to the side and use them on enemies. But apparently, this guy is really thin <laughs> and does, just doesn't care about it. He's got one in his... He took an arrow to the knee. He's the Skyrim guy. Uh, so yeah, there's the bridge. This is the guy that was shooting at us when we were on the bridge. More bones on the floor. Whenever you see bones on the floor, be aware they will probably come back to life. And the, the great thing about skeletons as well is you can hit them as they're getting up. Not too many enemies you can do that with. So he's got no head. Check he gets souls. They guard as well. You see, he's got his guard up there. Don't get parried by a skeleton. It can hurt quite a lot. And then run over and get here. So, yeah, we're 
where we looked into that room earlier and I said we'd link it up. This is the the room we looked into below us. Kind of there where that guy is. Is where we need to go. So this is the bridge we crossed and dropped off initially. See, so that's what I mean, you could have gone the other way. But practicing that roll onto the pillar is not a bad thing because there is going to be a ring on it in New Game Plus or Plus Plus, one of the two, there's a ring there. Uh, so yeah, we will need to drop on there at some point. Two of these guys together is not fun, so uh, try not to get them both on you at the same time. We can walk underneath, you see me walking underneath their attacks. Uh, it is quite easy to do, unless they do one of those. <laughs> Actually, he didn't hit me, he went straight through the shield. So what you're looking from these guys is, I think these ones can drop the shackles as well. They're extremely rare, it's a horrible drop rate. Um, yeah, we'll farm them later on, but do keep an eye out for them. And this is where I looked into, the where we were before when we came out the illusionary wall. Uh, I looked into this room, that's what you saw. So be careful here as you run into this room. You can see there's a bunch of bones on the floor. Turn around, start swinging, try and kill at least one or two if you can. The skeletons are not particularly a dangerous enemy. Because uh, even their shields, it's only like a little buckler type shield, so you can break their, their guard quite easily. This is Anri, so she's going to say that she's lost Horace now. So say no, it's your only option. Say no when you when you speak to her and go through, exhaust her dialogues until she's repeating herself. Important, very important you do this. Uh, Crystal Lizard, which is um, compared to the first game, oh, they're amazing in this game because you can just let them run on a, off an edge and you'll still get the item as long as they, uh, they die. And uh, grab the, the clump there, which will help against bleed if you have it. Now that is actually going to come in handy with the Crystal Lizard later on because one's going to clip through the floor with me. <laughs> but it will still die and I'll get the item. So walk down these stairs until the second kind of lamp, candles, whatever, uh, and stop because of that thing that's come barreling down. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, if it doesn't one-shot you, will knock you off the edge. It's horrendous. It just keeps going up and down these stairs. So, take it slower rather than quicker. Don't try and outrun it, you probably won't. And uh, you can use it to some comedic advantage as well. Like with this guy. I mean, it's just perfect, isn't it? We're just going to just stay here. Guard, move away from the arrows, and. Uh, <laughs> it's. Oh, beautiful. Now they are controlled by these guys, he's here on the right hand side, he's quite quick. I uh, didn't manage to get him, if you manage to kill him right away, uh, great, if not, be careful following him down here, he does it on purpose because there are other skeletons down here who have glowing eyes, uh, not sure this one does, kill them quickly because the one at the back here is going to start throwing these bombs uh, and it, it lets off a sort of stark spell that chases after you. Uh, also, the pots in this area will give off that spell as well. You can guard it, but it does go straight through your shield, more than likely, depending on which shield you're using. And once you kill that guy that was kind of controlling the ball, the ball will hit this gate and smash. Go back and get the undead shard from it, the undead uh, bone shard. Obviously, we need that. We need all of them. So these pots now, you're going to want to be careful. Uh, you can roll into the ones with the bones in, but any of them that are shut still, like that little one on the right there, uh, they'll let off that kind of sorcery, that dark magic that will chase you down. And at the end here is a ring, the Carthus Milk Ring. I actually like this ring. Uh, firstly, it gives you plus three dexterity. I think it's three, this ring. Either way, it increases your dexterity slightly, so that's good for us. Uh, I've still got the life ring on and poison bite ring, so I haven't actually been managing my rings very well. Um, so yeah, I'm going to put this on. 
what it does is it boosts your dexterity and then you get obscured rolling as well. So what those other skeletons were doing where they, they disappear as they roll, uh, we'll be able to do that as well. I just think it looks kind of cool, to be honest. Um, but the dexterity is what we're using the ring for. And then I'm looking through to see what else I've got. We haven't got any other rings my, that I usually stick with. Well, we do have one of them, actually. We have the uh, the pontiff's ring and the... Oh, no, and the, the Clorinthy ring. Uh, so I'm just going to stick the life ring back on for now. Uh, we will be getting the other ring later on. Uh, the other side of the pontiff's ring, which... Uh, oh, watch that switch there. I completely forgot about that one. Um, increases damage which is, is great. As the more you hit, so the, the quicker your attacks and the more hit attacks you do, the more your damage goes up. It's kind of a buff that happens uh, in the background. And we'll be doubling that effect by getting the sword as well. Watch out for the jars. Like I, no, not good at all. Uh, this one here, he has the, uh, the glowing eyes, so he is going to come back. Come on, down we go. Does he come back? I thought he came back. <laughs> He's got the glow. Does he not come back? Did he? Did I ignore him? Huh. He should have come back. Anyway, these two. These two enemies here are the ones we're going to be farming. The, the problem with this farming spot, it's the best one to do it in, but... These guys have shields, and they're just such a pain to get. If, you, if they hold the shield up, it can be a pain. You can break through it if you just keep hitting them. But both of them at the same time can be a real pain as well. Now, we're not going to attack them from this side. We're actually going to go past them in a moment. And there's a bonfire. I'm going to keep killing them over and over again. Now, we're not going to start. You can obviously start now. Get the Crystal Sage uh, Rapier. Um, get the Symbol of Avarice and go for it for a bit if you want uh, we will be getting another ring later on in two videos time that's going to help with that so you can wait for now or just start it I mean the drop rate even with all of the rings and everything like that is so low uh, we need 30 of them it takes a long time I'm not going to lie it might actually delay these videos <laughs> Because uh, I'm going to have to do it at some point to, to get the Platinum along with you. So, uh, yeah, the, the amount of farming needed in this uh, in this game might actually delay the videos for a day or so. Because <laughs> it does t it will take hours. Uh, the, potentially, we're potentially looking at four or five hours for just the uh, Vertebra Shackles. Have I been saying the Delkin Shackles? I've been playing too much Magic the Gathering really <laughs> recently. Uh, Videl Canori. Um, yeah, so upgrade the, the Twin Blades here. You should have enough large to do it at this point. Don't worry, we'll be getting more. Um, another way of getting the Vertebra Shackles is if you have a friend. Now, this guide is 100% offline. Everything I do, you're going to be able to do offline. You can do everything. And I wanted to keep it that way to keep it kind of timeless. If, you know, 10 years in the future, if the servers are off, this will still be pertinent. Uh, but if you do have uh, a friend that is willing to help you out, uh, they can drop a red sign soapstone and you make sure you're in the Mound Maker's Covenant and um, you yeah, you will be summoned, so use passwords to get summoned to their, their place and um, and then kill them. So yeah, make sure they, they obviously don't have any souls or whatever. Uh, yeah, they, they just need to keep um, going back, killing them. Uh, you won't, they won't need to be embered either if you, you use the soapstone, the red soapstone thing uh, and do that that is a way of doing it if you have a friend that's going to do that with you uh, maybe look that up and sort that out but this guide is offline so we're not going to be doing that so this is the only way that we're going to be doing it is be, by killing those two enemies over and over again so the, basically what you would do bonfire um, go right watch out for the ball, kill them, go back to the bonfire. Now, I'm actually going to be getting the coiled sword later on as well, which is an infinite homeward bone. It kind of helps with um, farming because it means you don't have to do the run back. Sometimes you'll have to wait for the ball to come past and what have you, and it can take, a, I don't know, 10 seconds, which when farming is a pain in the ass. So 
maybe wait until we've got that as well it speeds up the process a bit more and if you're on ps5 like i am uh, also the loading times are shorter so it's it's a lot better right down here you're going to get invaded if you're embered of course make sure you're embered at this point so night slayer sorig invades you he's going to drop us a gesture well he's going to give us a gesture and drop us a ring this is the easiest place to kill him so <laughs> uh, drop make sure you uh drop an ember and then um get him to spawn in and obviously you can see what we're doing this guy hits incredibly hard uh, and he's fast that's the problem he hits hard and he's fast he's probably the hardest NPC in the game uh, he's absolutely no joke and he is in human form later on as well I'm not gonna make that so don't do that uh, yeah he's using the fume knight greatsword uh, the fume greatsword I, I forget the actual name of it but it's the one used by the fume knight in Dark Souls 2 so all we're doing as you can see is just kind of running up and down and manipulating this ball <laughs> uh, getting it to kill him for us making him look like an absolute clown I could have actually finished him off at this point probably but he's so quick even when as he's getting up he'll just roll past and hit you He's uh, unfortunately he has that delayed attack as well so I think are we done yet? no just one more and when he dies, he's going to give you the My Thanks gesture. Also, if he kills you, you'll get the My Thanks gesture. But you obviously won't get the ring from him. So as he dies, uh, you're going to get the Night Slayer's ring, which we obviously need. So we're going to be seeing that guy later on, but we can actually in, in, uh, remove that encounter. We won't need to do it. Uh, we'll need to run past him to get something, but we won't actually need to fight him. So that's the easiest place to kill him. Make sure you do that. Because it allows you to summon him for a boss later on as well. Uh, the, the ring we actually get is quite good. Uh, it, it, whenever an enemy holds up a shield against you, uh, like it does with you, uh, you hit it, the, a chunk of stamina will go down. Um, and what that ring does is it, it increases the amount of stamina that goes down, if that makes sense. So you do more stamina damage, let's say, when you hit an enemy's shield, making them uh, break easier not break the shield but break their guard uh, so you set them up for a repost or what have you so it's actually quite good and I could actually be wearing it right now as opposed to maybe the life ring it'd probably come in handier uh, it's not a ring I used in the long term but in the short term if you want to try it go for it uh, this place is horrible for two reasons the roof is the ceiling is covered in these blob things which, if they land on you, you're going to see it happen in a moment. You can't, even if I, I know they're there and I am looking for them, um, they, they still get you. I don't know, they just appear out of nowhere, I swear. Like, I, I'm going to look at the ceiling in a minute. I th there's one directly above me, I think. Yeah, he's... <laughs> uh, now, the reason that these two enemies work extremely well together is... Uh, you're obviously going to get these guys dropping on you. And you want, what you want to do is run through... Um, and all the blobs will just land on the floor and you'll be fine. But you've got bone wheels, which are one of the worst. Well, the worst, they're not that bad in this one. They were horrible in Dark Souls 1. Uh, but bone wheels, they just come towards you like you saw it happen. And they will just cut through your your shield and then straight through your health. They they don't care. They just keep going. So the what you would do is try and just run through to avoid the blobs. But then you've got these guys. Having more than one of these guys after you is just horrible. Uh, you can see he gets me there even as I, I kind of run towards him. Uh, so you need to get rid of them as quickly as possible and only have one at a time after you don't go running through this area. Um, if you're any good, <laughs> as they roll past you, you can move slightly to the side and hit them and it will stop their roll. Uh, but it'll take a bit of practice, obviously. So I'm just I'm just kind of going for it. There's just the one left if I get taken by the, the slime thing. <laughs> Straight into it. That's just horrible. There. Right. Okay. Ignore all the other slime. One there, once all those things are down, you can uh, ignore the slime things. Uh, be careful here. There's one above you, obviously. And that's the Carthus Milk Ring. Uh, what does the Carthus Milk Ring do? No, the Carthus Blood Ring, that was. Uh, we've got the Carthus Milk Ring on. Uh, the Carthus Blood Ring is the one that, it, oh, it improves, uh, it's actually quite good. 
it gives you more iframes as you roll like quite a lot quite a few more four or five that doesn't sound like a lot but when you're only got working with 12 or 13 uh, yeah it's a, it's quite a lot um, even with fat rolling it improves your your iframes when fat rolling so the you as you roll you are invincible for longer essentially um, yeah it's it's quite good but on not, not just upside that ring it's downside as well uh, you take more damage in general so if you're really good at rolling and don't take much damage then it is the ring for you I just had to do that that's those two skeletons down there that we're farming uh, so I ran up here took, went straight for the archer just to get rid of him there will be one rolling after you so be careful there is a guy controlling that ball up here so that's why we've come up here um, to get rid of him Large tides, night shards. There should be plenty of those around here. Yeah, it's one of these guys again. Uh, they are they hit hard as well. They're so fast. But uh, if you can get them into a flurry of attacks, that very rarely they'll be able to get out of it. But he just did, of course. Uh, he will come back to life. I know this one does. I swear that other one should have done. He had white eyes. Maybe he just kind of forgot about me. If you're on the right side of them, or behind them, you can backstab them. He'll stay here now. He runs off. He will have been at the top of the stairs as we came up. Grave Warden's Ashes. These are obviously for the Shrine Maiden. And then we're going to go down here. Illusionary Wall, and we're back down at the bottom again. And, of course, there's another one of these guys. Fun times. They feel very bloodborne in their movement, very quick, these guys. Right, so the ball has exploded and is on the floor. The, the item's on the floor over there, which is a dark gem, obviously, we need. Now, this crab comes out of it. I have no idea why. I don't understand the law behind that. Why a crab is in that bone ball, ball bone. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that thing. I don't understand why there's a crab in it. But anyway, there'll be a crab there for you to kill. Right, this is the crystal lizard that clips through the wall and falls through. See you then. Um, he does die, thankfully, and I do get a fire gem. There we go. So there's a fire gem from him. Uh, this guy here, hes you can see his blade is slightly red. Uh, you saw me heal there because he hits really hard. And he he's using Carthus Rogue on his blade. So you can see the damage, uh, the, the bleed buildup is extremely quick on his blade. And he's going to see there, that's blood loss. That's how much damage you get from, uh, from bleed. Get rid of him quickly. A large titanite shard. I think that is a, is a definite drop. I'm not 100% on that, so I haven't marked it as such. Hopefully it is. And now we're uh, on the other side of this gate where we fought Sorig. So open it up. This is going to be our shortcut to the boss now. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're pretty much done with this area. Uh, yes, we have nearly 20 minutes left of the video. Uh, we're going to go and do a bit of a side thing. But with regards to getting through this area and getting to the boss, we are, we are done. We just got across that bridge. But do not do that stick to the right. You can see me kind of going up the hill and bouncing off the, the environment there. Stick to the right hand side. Otherwise, uh, all of those skeletons in the area will wake up and come running after you. We don't want that right now because we want to go up here and speak to Anri. So go through the dialogue. Say you've not seen Horace again. Very important you do this. So I'm double checking. Say nothing. Double check. Say nothing. Yeah, okay. On you go. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so get, make sure you you speak to Anri on there. We're going to go and see Horace. You can actually drop down here uh, and continue on. But for fun, we're going to do the uh, the skeleton bridge. So as soon as you walk towards the bridge, you're going to see all the skeletons get up. So run across. Uh, maybe wait for a few to get on before hitting it, but hit the, the bridge. And as a few of them will go on, uh, it will eventually buckle under its own weight kind of thing and uh, snap. So, Indiana Jones. <laughs> uh, yeah, don't worry, you don't need to keep hitting it. You just need to do it once or twice uh, and it will 
kind of break it enough. It's when the the a certain amount of skeletons are on it that it'll break. Right, heal up and run. <laughs> Uh, yeah, don't try and take this guy on head on yet. Now, uh, what I'm doing is I'm running and I'm going to wake up all these skeletons down here and they are going to help me fight this guy. They, they do, do go and fight the demon, which is great. Uh, alternatively, run straight down there and light the bonfire at the bottom. It's in the, the not the room at the bottom, but the room next to it. Uh, so if you want to do that, go down there and light that bonfire if you don't. Because this guy is more than likely going to kill you the first time you fight him. He's quite tough, even with the skeletons helping. He has a, a jump attack that he does get me with, because of course he does. Um, so yeah, I'm just killing this skeleton at the top. I should actually go down and help while there are skeletons around. He has an AoE blast that he does, which you need to be aware of. He obviously uses his big uh, axe thing. Uh, and he also does this thing, which I was stuck in an animation, otherwise I would have dodged out of the way of. I'll just heal underneath him, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, he does that blast as well to push you back. He's the same as the demon that we fought with um, Siegvard at the beginning. Just get rid of him quickly, do as much damage as he can. While the skeletons are there helping. And you'll get soul of a demon, it's not something we necessarily need, we don't need the soul of a demon. Uh, it's for boss weapons, but do not crack it, obviously, because don't get in the habit of cracking. That's the only reason I tell you not to. And then grab the uh, the witch's ring at the bottom. Now, this is leading to the next area we're going to do in the next video, but we need to come down here for a very specific reason, uh, and that is to go and kill Horus. Uh, we need to do this before doing the boss of... Um, the area we're doing catacombs of Carthus. This is Smoldering Lake. We're gonna dip our toe, so to speak, into Smoldering Lake and just go and see Horus. Right, so <laughs> the thing with this area is that there is a um, three-shot ballista that covers this whole area and shoots you, so you can see there, one, and then the two, other two have hit the wall. So you can go up to this point and it won't get you anymore. I shouldn't have used my second Estus. I should have sat at the bonfire, to be honest, because I'm about to go and fight an NPC. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, that area, we, we will be doing that next. It, it is quite uh, a decent-sized area, to be honest. It's not just the lake. You need to go underneath it as well, into the ruins. So um, we'll be bunching those two together in the next video. Uh, but, yeah, we're going to kill the, area, uh, the boss of this area uh, that we're currently in, Catacombs. So kill the two uh, lizards, you're going to get a chunk, which is great because we already have one, so we'll be able to do the first chunk upgrade once we get another large titanite, uh, or enough. Yeah, watch out for him doing that. He's actually quite weak with regards to his damage, but he is a pain. So don't worry, you are supposed to kill him, so go for this fight. It's part of the ending that we're trying to do. I've got no more health, so unfortunately I've, I've got to rely on my blades healing me a bit, which they didn't really do. Uh, I want him to single hand in the shield. I don't want to go at him when he's double handing for that reason. But I know I can sort of time it and move towards him doing uh, my combo and he'll get to him. Anyway, kill him. You need to get the Llewellyn shield. And then there's a couple of large titanite shards around here. So I'm going to be one short of the final large titanite upgrade by the, the time we go and do it, unfortunately. But uh, there you go. Some yellow bug pellets. Now, I'm I'm just going to run back to the, bon the bonfire at this point. But I, I remember uh, I don't have enough Estus to survive the ballista. So I'm actually going to use a homeward bone, so you don't need to do this, but I don't want to have to come back down here. And the ballista will, it always gets me. Always. It, the thing is, you can actually see them coming if you look up, but you need to see where you're going as well, so you can't look up the whole time. Uh, and if you're good, you'll be able to time it and kind of hear it as it fires off and time it well. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to bone back to that uh, that bonfire there. What I'm doing up here, what I should have, I should have done this the wrong way around. I do apologise for this. This is, I completely forgot that the bridge resets because I've obviously gone back 
uh, to the bonfire now. So at the enemies reset and the bridge resets, I, I did not think. What I should have done is when we killed the demon, uh, all the skeletons were dead. Uh, I was just concentrating on getting to Horus and getting that done. So coming, I missed this item here as well, this large titanite. Uh, I was always planning to come back up here. But because uh, I've, I've sat at the bonfire now, it's reset that bridge so we can't actually go back up. Um, there is a mimic up here, so I'm going to show you where that is in case you need to um, farm for the symbol of avarice in case you didn't get it. Hopefully you did. But yeah, I've had enough of fighting these. I was trying not to wake them all up, but then I kind of realized the bridge is probably going to be shut at this point. So I'll just uh, see how many I wake up and then uh, let them run after me and clean them up. Uh, yeah, and then we'll go and do the the mimic. That was a weird. I was going for that was a weird animation that that stab forward with that thrust. So I was going for a backstab. Okay. Right, you can actually get the mimic to fight against the demon as well if you want. But also you don't want a, demon, uh, a Mimic chasing you around while you're trying to fight a Demon in case it doesn't work. So same as usual, the usual uh, Mimic tactics is be careful, dodge once, hit once, and then, whoa, that was close. Obviously watch out for the grab, that's going to be the one that kills you. I actually staggered him there, I could have finished him, never mind. Just don't get greedy. <laughs> That's the thing with these guys. That's the whole point, isn't it? You're getting greedy looking at all the chests, and uh, it's a trap. So the Black Blade is quite a good katana. Has what I think it might actually have the best damage of all the katanas. Uh, yeah, the bridge is out, or the bridge isn't out. So I'll have to go back. Never mind completely forgot that when I sat down at the bonfire, or used the bone, should I say. But it's no my, no problem, we're right here at it anyway. <laughs> that wind-up is ridiculous. But they don't have very good tracking either, you saw it's kind of... Some enemies will track you, and they will they'll wind up, and they will hit you regardless of where you stood. The skeletons, not so much. So I'm going to walk back to the uh, the other catacombs of Carthus Bonfire. I'm just going to run straight down the stairs from the ball and um, go through the gate, cross the bridge and take the boss on. Now the boss we're coming up against is High Lord Walnir. He's a big skeleton, and I mean big, like serious. Uh, you don't even see his legs, he's that big. I don't know if he, not, even if, if he has legs, to be honest. Run past all of these. Try not to wake the big rat up like I just did. Sometimes you can get past here without the big rat waking up, but he is, he's on me. <laughs> uh, just keep going, keep going, run to the other side of the bridge. He's not, he's definitely on me. <laughs> he's not giving up. Quickly break the bridge. Hit it a couple of times, get it weakened. No, he didn't fall off. <laughs> You're not supposed to be up here. Right, let's go and do the boss. So you won't need a summon for this one or anything like that. Of course, if there is a player there, golden player uh, summon, then feel free because you're going to get that sunlight medal. So go in, touch the, the uh, goblet there. And you'll be taken to a new area. Oh, look, an item. It, this is the Grave Warden Pyromancy Tome. Oh, <laughs> there he is. Uh, High Lord of Olnir. That's a hell of a surprise the first time you did it. Um, yeah, I completely just didn't dodge then. 
Uh, right, the thing with High Lord Walnut is you just need to break his three bracelets. That's all you need to do and he'll die. Um, but what he does is, he, he, as he rears up there, he, he starts breathing this smoke uh, onto the floor. You need to get the hell out because that smoke kills you very quickly, extremely quickly. So you need to just kind of... Uh, he's <laughs> infuriating with his movement sometimes. You need to go back and forth between his wrists and try and get to his bracelets. And then once you break one, he's going to slide down a bit. And um, you want to run and get the other one. So yeah, it wasn't in time and he is doing the breathing again. So I need to run up here and just be out of range. And then he will crawl up after you sometimes. Another thing he likes to do is slam on the floor, which is good because it means he can get to bracelet. He will sometimes summon little skeletons. Uh, yep, yeah, oh, we just got it there. Um, and with his his right hand, this hand here, he will sometimes summon a large sword, uh, which can be a bit of a pain. Hopefully he doesn't do that one, but you'll need to just obviously start dodging through it. You can use your shield if you want, uh, I just find it's, it's better not to. Here he comes, crawling up a bit, closing the gap. No, it's <laughs> back and forth with that wrist. So I'm going to need to run out of the way again, he's doing the breathing. You see his, his health is nearly gone. He is actually taking damage whenever you hit his hand, but just break the three uh, bracelets. Here, this is the part where he um, summons some skeletons, which does take quite a while, which means you should be able to have more than enough time to go and break his uh, bracelet. And what if you don't get dragged down with his, <laughs> his hand there? So you'll get the trophy, and you'll get his soul as well. And there we go. We do actually need to cash his soul in for a pyromancy, I think his, his is. Uh, I don't do it at the end of this video, primarily because I forgot to do it at this point. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we'll do it later on. It's no problem. And there we go. That's Catacombs of Carthus done. So from here we would go straight on and that would take us to Irithyll. We have the doll from the Deacon of the Deep fight so we can go straight into Irithyll now uh, but we're going to go back and do Smoldering Lake in its own video it's probably going to be a similar length to this one so I've not combined them uh, we'd have some ashes for the maiden now so obviously give her the ashes and see what she's got plenty of wares she does sell spells and rings we will get all those later on different armor sets if you want to mess around with those she has a uh, Horace's now And then reinforce. You should be able to. You should be one. No, sorry. You should be one shy, uh, but you should be able to do the shield if you're coming along doing the shield with me. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. We didn't get an Esther shard this time, so they won't be one of those. We do have the tomes, the pyromancy ones. We do have a dark pyromancy tome which we will save. Uh, so we'll give those in later on as well. And once we save Carla. Uh, she'll take the dark ones off us. So I'm going to do two in dex, two in endurance. Uh, slowly doing a little bit of strength as well in case we want to use a uh, certain shield later on. There's a, a shield called the Shield of Want. Now if you didn't get the Crystal Sage Rapier or you want more souls when you're farming, you can use the Shield of Want to get more souls and you'll need uh, more strength to, to actually wield that efficiently. Uh, unless If you don't have enough strength, then the enemies will cut straight through and you'll just get staggered straight away so I'm doing the usual doing the cleanup put anything any shields so I'm keeping these two for now uh, shields and everything away armor what have you right thanks very much for watching I'll see you on the next one